You smell that? That is fair. Today is Form 5 Parents Day. So Parents Day over and there's one thing that students who in school don't realize. The light switch. Let me just tell you. Let me, I'll tell you about that just now. So there is one thing that school students take for granted and that is the fact that you are allowed to do an SBA. Free 20%. Free 20% mark. Students who are resitting, they have to do a paper tree. You know it's a paper tree? Pressure. Do you know what's the number one thing I told parents today? Especially those who have children not doing so hot in the maths. I told them don't take the SBA for granted because if you have to resit this and do paper tree, it's a different scene. It's much easier to get your 20% in the SBA if you are a weak math student than to get your 20% in paper tree. So this is the second question in paper tree. I'm gonna do here, I posted a video earlier. On the first question, paper tree, May 2018. Let's get into it and let's see what this was all about. This paper was a nightmare for some people, a nightmare. Some people let's go to sleep and have a nightmare and see this paper. So let me revisit this night, this nightmare. Hey, one more thing, one more thing. Saturday coming is my birthday. And to celebrate that, I'm, I'm thinking of doing a live video or maybe starting a live video where I'll do like one hour, one full long hour of mathematics, maybe Saturday or Sunday. Maybe, I'm thinking about it. Let me know if you're interested in that. That would be like an actual online lessons class that, you know, that people will charge you for. I will be doing it free on YouTube, a whole lessons class, live, where you could talk to me. So let me know if you're interested in that. Don't forget if you know anybody who could sing, tell them to email me or Instagram me. I have a secret project that I want to do that could be really fun. Um, I don't know, it's still in development in my mind. But if you're up, if you're feeling up for some fun, message me if you can sing. Um, cue, cue my best intro. Cue my best intro. Intro. So this was the second question. Now remember to the copy I have real bootleg. Eh? So you see how this you see how this thing looking? Now what we're dealing with. So I'll kind of read it out for those who have problems seeing a toy rocket is projected upwards from a point O on a level ground and the vertical height it travels can be modeled by the quadratic function. Boom. So a quadratic function modeling how you pelt out a toy rocket. So it's like you start the toy rocket here, you shoot it out, it reaches up to the top and it lands down here. That is the question. Um, they're going and ask you about height and distance and thing, but you have this guy to help you. So what you need to do is visual what you would have done in this exam if you, you know, was into, <laughs> into it and it didn't give you nightmares. You'd have probably drawn a little sketch and realized that the what's going on in my sketch. You'd have drawn a little sketch and realized that the ground. What represents where it take off from and where it lands. It doesn't go through the ground, eh? so ignore that part there. So this is a little quadratic, and the ground here really looking like the the, the line y is, y is equal to zero, which is also known as the x-axis, which will mean that these points are... I notice I do the question, it I just explain in some stuff. These points are like the roots. Um, of the quadratic equation. Okay, let's see what's going on. Find the vertical height of the rocket when it is one meter away from O. H height of x height. Um, so H being a function of x where x is like the, the, the horizontal distance. So Hx is 40x minus 8x squared. So all you need to do to find the height, the H of x, is plug in x into this and x is 1. So just put 1 into that and, and let's see what we got. So when x is equal to 1, h of 1 is equal to 40 by 1 minus 8, 1 squared, 40 minus 8, 32 meters. So that's the answer for this for this here. Next part asks us to determine the distance from O when the rocket returns to the ground. So 
they want this distance here. You know, you send off the rocket, pew, 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 boom, it hit the ground. So they want the distance from here to there. All right, so that is, let's see how we'll get that. Um, so when on the ground, the H is zero, you understand that? H meaning the height. When the rocket hits the ground, the height will be zero. And next time the rock, do you know next time the height will be zero? When the rocket is now going to take off, the height will be zero. If you watch it, like if you consider like this as the y axis and this is h, the height, the height is zero when it took off and zero when it land. So let's put h equals zero into the equation. So we just put the 40x minus 8x squared to be zero and we solve for x and we'll get the 2x values. Let's watch, let's watch this happen. Eh? So either 8x is equal to zero. This is the first part. This is when it take off. This is when the distance, the horizontal distance is zero. And then we have the second part. It's when x is equal to five. Five meters is when the horizontal distance is five meters. So by just plugging in h equals zero, we can find this being zero and this being five. This is how a quadratic equation is solved. Now this, now this is not no um hard quadratic simply because there's no c term. There's just a a x squared and a and a b x in this. There's no c, so you could just factorize easily by pulling out the the eight x here. And either this equals zero or that equals zero. Now, I'm not going to explain how quad what too much about quadratics and then I am uh, hoping I understand about, about quadratics. I have lots of stuff on quadratics up, so you can go and check those. All right. So, returns to the ground at 5 meters. All right. That just draw right through my diagram there, boy. That just write right through my diagram. Oh, man. Yeah, but is the answer here. Put it in a nice little statement, but just do write it on top of the diagram. So what is the value of x when each is greatest? What are they asking you? So this question is all about trying to figure out what are they asking. So you find out that this was 0, this is 5. We find out that when x is 1, we're going up to... We're going up to something, I forget. When x is 1, how much we went up to, by 32. Them kind of thing now. When x was 1, we went up to 32. This was 32. 32 when x is 1. Well... Technically, I'm supposed to draw this here because that is 0. So this is 32 and x is 1. So now we want to find what's the highest height that could happen here. This is really the maximum point on the quadratic. And there are many ways to find the maximum point on the quadratic. Once again, I'm not going into that. But one way of finding the maximum point is just minus b and 2a. Or you can... Well, for admins people, there's differentiation. Or you could complete the square... You can do lots of stuff. So minus b on 2a, plug it in, and you're just going to get the x value that gives the maximum height, right? Oh, they, they want the x value. I thought they wanted the height, the maximum height. Calculate it. No, yes, they wanted the maximum height. They want the x value when h is greatest, and then they say to calculate the value of this greatest height. I wonder if I do that, boy. If I do that, I do it now and really and truly. I, as it's one o'clock in the night, I real tired. But I, um, press play, press play at maximum height. Uh, you know, I didn't do the thing. I real draw a diagram and thing. Oh yeah, here what to do now? Here what to do? Do this for me. So you're gonna substitute h of x equal. What's the what's the, what's the formula, boy? H of x is equal to um forty x minus eight x squared equal to 40x minus 40x minus 8x squared so now you're going to substitute h of 2.5 substitute in that right the 2.5 and tell me what value you get for each please do that in the comments there and once you do it press like and put down your um put your answer in the comments and let's see who who gets it correct so that's that's to get the extra mark here this will just get one mark but to get the next mark you'll have to that's the thing with this paper, boy. I find to get one mark there in plain with you, boy. You know what I mean? It's stingy with the marks, boy. To get that one mark, you had to come good. You didn't get no free one mark here, just so, just so. All right. Sorry about the handwriting to where you know it is. You know it is. Um, whatever that is, is the point with the coordinates. This 
and q is the point or there's a p there's a p there boy p is the point with the coordinates that q is the point with the coordinates this show the gradient slope m of the straight line that passes through the points p and q is m watch now if you wasn't into this maths and you see this paper here you would really cuss and just work on the examiner i know how it is i know it is but let's let's see what they want we want the gradient of the straight line that passes through the point p and q so you're just basically finding gradient man take your time read the question so Gradient is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Go ahead, find that gradient. And uh, that's minus 4 over negative 3. Well, negative 4 over negative 3 is the same as 4 over 3. So that's a gradient right there. And they said to show. Anytime they say do this, show, that means they're going to tell you the answer. So you could get to see if your answer is correct. So you know now for a fact that that 2 marks belongs to who? Numero uno. So let's check the next part of this paper. We're coming down to the end, people. We're coming down to the end. The equation of the straight line that is perpendicular to PQ. So this is based on the last stuff that we just do. We just found the gradient of that to be 4 over 3, right? And there's a perpendicular line. I could already tell you that the perpendicular line, perpendicular line gradient is going to be negative 3 over 4. That's how it works. Go back and check that. Perpendicular lines, the gradient is like the negative inverse. Um... Parallel lines, the gradients are equal. So that is basically the trick in the question there already, you know. Um, passes through the point, blah, blah, blah. So they want you to find the equation of the straight line in that form. They want you to give the values of A, B, and C. So remember the magic equation that I showed, uh, that I, sh where's the word, but I showed, showed, show, showed, showed, you, showed you all, showed, that's what I mean. That I gave to you all a long time ago. Um, the equation was y2, no, y minus y1. This is just stating that perpendicular line. This is the relationship between them, right? If a line is perpendicular and the gradient is m1 here, the gradient here will be m. Um, they related, they related via, um, so, oh gosh, the, the negative inverse not related via that relationship, that little relationship there. All right, let me not take too long explain that. You can look back on that. But what we're talking about now is the, the this equation here, this powerful equation here. This is where you're going to substitute the point. This is where you're going to substitute the gradient. We've, we organize ourselves for the gradient already. The gradient is negative 3 and 4, so that means now substitute the point. The new point is this. And substitute the gradient here. So work that out. And we get it to look like this. Now we just need to bring across the x, bring across the number. Why we do not like bring across x and number? Because we want it to look like this boy. So if we're trying to form it up into that little nice equation of a line there. There it is. So now that we get that, we can say a is 4, b is 3. And C is 23. So you might take some time and sit down and watch through this and make sure. Hey, make sure I didn't do any mistakes. I am very sleepy. So mistakes is happen. Mistakes happen. Um by the end of the paper. I'm trying to press play and it's the end. Alright, the end. So that was it. 20 marks. I did the video with the first question, maybe what, about two or three videos ago, so you can go back and check that. And this is the end of paper three, 2018 May. In my opinion, it wasn't that bad. Seriously, it wasn't that bad. If you didn't know your maths, you wouldn't be able to do the questions here because it really tests your maths now. Right? So. It was, it's not like it's a hard question, it's just that it comes on some, you know, topics that people may not be 100 with. Alright, so till next time, don't forget to subscribe if you're new around here. I do this stuff nearly every day. Um, and press the like, you know, when you press the like, that really um, boosts the video so that more people can, more people can view it. Alright, you all probably need the sleepiness, so let me, let me bust out before I fall asleep here. Press stop.